Hey, how's it going guys? Mr. Boss for the win here. And in today's GTA 5 video, I'm going to be telling you guys how to make the most money possible while doing the diamond casino heist. So this certainly is probably not going to be the easiest. And in order to get the most amount of money, you might have to have the ideal setup in terms of a crew and the scenario that you end up getting. But regardless, we're going to be talking about it from start to finish. And I'm going to be trying to go in chronological order of how you can make the most money possible. So it actually all begins by what you get inside of the vault, your vault contents. And what we know so far is that this is random. And we only know of four items that can be found in the vault so far. The first item is cash. And cash has a high chance of appearing in the vault and it has a maximum price of $2,115,000 that you can get. The next is artwork. Artwork has a low chance of appearing in the vault and has a price of $2,350,000. Gold has a very low chance, but it has a price of $2,585,000. And the fourth vault content, which... At this point, we don't know if it's being kept for a special event, although some players have had the opportunity to actually get it. So I'd imagine this is the rarest of the bunch is diamonds. And diamonds has a total amount of $3,290,000. So obviously, if you want to go about making the most money from the heist, you'd obviously want to shoot for diamonds, but that's right now obviously pretty tough. We don't know even if you can. So I think your best bet is to try and always go for gold or artwork. Do not settle for cash. If you get cash, just simply re-roll your heist uh, vault content prep and see if you can get artwork or gold because cash is just so little. I mean, it's only a difference between like 2 million to 2.5 million, but that could be an extra 100 or 2000 dollars that each one of you guys take away. And when you jump up to diamonds, that's an extreme difference. So that's the first thing you need to do. Avoid cash at all costs. The next thing you would choose is your approach. Now, for the most part, all three approaches are the same. However, Rockstar have clarified that the silent and stealthy approach is the hardest. The big con is a medium level difficulty and aggressive would be the easiest difficulty. And so because of that, the silent and stealthy approach is going to be the way to get the most amount of money from the heist. Now, in my personal opinion, it is also the hardest, but just the way the silent and stealthy approach goes, you'll actually avoid gunshots and whatnot and avoid being detected. We'll talk about that a little bit later, but honestly, I would choose the silent and stealthy approach if you want to make the most money. Now, building off of that, if you have completed a heist once, and you want to do it again, sometimes you will see the opportunity to do it in a hard version. And this will actually get you extra money. In fact, Lester will even come over the comms and say like, you know, it's a little soon to be doing this, but if you do it, the payout might be a little bit better. So you can get a hard heist level if you have successfully completed a version and then try to do it uh, soon after you've already completed it. I don't know what the timetable for that is, whether you have to complete another heist first, but it's actually pretty easy to get the hard level. Uh, now, I'm not sure how much harder it is. I actually haven't done that yet, but I'm assuming the payout is going to be a whole lot nicer. Now, speaking about choosing your approach, again, if you're doing silent and stealthy, which would be the way to make the most money, now you need to choose your uh, crew. And this is actually really important. Now, traditionally, I would say that it's probably a good idea to select the higher end crew members, especially for the gunmen, the getaway vehicles, and the hacker. But if you're doing the silent and stealthy approach, think about it. If you do everything correctly, you shouldn't need to really use your weapons. You also should be undetected when you leave the casino, thus not really making a need for an extremely powerful or fast getaway vehicle. So if you're doing the silent and stealthy approach and you have a perfect crew, I would actually recommend choosing the lowest amount, the gunman and the getaway driver that take the lowest amount of money. Instead, what I would do is save that high percentage value for the hacker. I still think no matter what approach you take, 
having more time in the vault is going to be your best bet. So if you're going to splurge on one crew member, make it the hacker. But of course, that's really only going to work for the silent and stealthy approach and might also only work for the big con as well if you are able to get out undetected. Uh, obviously, if your cover's blown, then you're in a little bit of trouble because your weapons aren't all that great and your getaway vehicles might stink, but that would be the way to maximize the amount of money. Now, during the actual heist itself, the only way in which you can lose money is if you are shot and your duffel bags end up taking damage. So again, theoretically, if you're doing the silent and stealthy approach or the big con, if you're able to successfully get in and out of the vault without being detected, you should be able to slip out of the heist without being shot at, thus being able to keep near 100% of your take. That's why I think the aggressive approach and obviously failing any of your approaches is not all that great because no one is bulletproof, you are going to take damage, and that amount is only going to increase the more players you have because obviously NPCs are going to be shooting at more people. So something to keep in mind right there, that's another reason why the silent and stealthy approach is probably your best bet here. Now, another tip, once you're inside of the vault, Lester might mention that there are security boxes that you can drill into with the power drill. Uh, completely ignore these, they take way too much time and you only get like five to $10,000 per box that you end up drilling. It's not like you find secret diamonds in there that are worth like a million dollars. I think the safety deposit security boxes are a total sham. Don't waste your time on them, whether it's diamonds or gold or cash. Just try to collect those. Try to get the cash that can be found behind the fingerprint scanners too, but ignore the safety deposit boxes. Those things are not worth it at all. Now, when it comes to actually selling your goods, there's one clear choice here. You obviously want to sell to the high-end, faraway buyer. Yes, you have to travel across the state in a getaway vehicle, but honestly, it's worth it to get 100% plus of your cash. And honestly, the further away you get from the Diamond Casino and Resort, the less resistance there's going to be in terms of police and noose and FIB agents and stuff like that. So it's honestly not that big of a deal to go any further away, especially if it means making the most amount of money. Now, another thing you're going to want to do if you're trying to maximize your payout from the heist, and that is try to complete all of the challenges associated with them the elite challenges, uh, anything else that you might be able to accomplish inside of the mission itself. Like I know, for example, on one of the last heists I did, Lester like came over the intercom and said there was like bonus money in the vault or bonus money on one of the floors. So we ended up going and getting one of those. So just pay attention to not only the challenges you have to do in game, but also some of the dialogue that Lester might provide for you as it could mean extra opportunities to make a little bit more money. And the last big tip that I can give you guys today is simply replay the heist. That's how you obviously get the hard levels unlocked. That's also how you get a lot of the other challenges as well by completing all three of the heists, by doing them in order, by doing them without dying. There's a handful of other challenges associated with repeating the heist missions as well. So uh, bottom line, just continue to do them over and over and over again. And that's the best part about these heists. As you continue to do them, you'll understand the layout of the Diamond Casino and Resort. You'll learn some more tips and tricks along the way. You'll figure out which approach you are ultimately best at, what escape route you like, what entry route you like. And there's a lot of things associated with it that are cool, like the various cutscenes and the characters you meet and the Easter eggs that you see. So honestly, even if money wasn't our primary objective here, it's fun just to try different approaches to see what new things you ultimately run into. But anyways, that's all the information that I've got for you guys in this video today. And that is how I think you can get the maximum payout possible doing the Diamond Casino Heist in GTA Online. I'd love to hear from you guys in the comments down below. What is your favorite approach and how much money have you made from the Diamond Casino Heist so far? Let me know your thoughts, opinions, and more in the comments down below. If you guys did go on to enjoy this video though, a like rating would of course be awesome. And be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel if you are new or you want to stay up to date on all the latest GTA and all the Diamond Casino Heist videos that I'm doing here on my channel over the next couple of days and weeks. And be sure to ring that notification bell as well. Sometimes YouTube just doesn't work and if you ring that bell, you'll always be guaranteed to be notified when new videos arrive. 
But of course, as always, guys, thank you all so much for watching. Take care, and I'll see you guys in the next video.